All right, hello friends. We had some snow today, and that made me think to read to you, Mary Had a Little Snowplow by Rachel Matson. And when I first picked up this book, I said to myself, I wonder if it's anything like Mary Had a Little Lamb. You might remember this. If you haven't heard it before, it goes like this. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. See, it's a rhyme, it's a nursery rhyme. It followed her to school one day, which was against the rule. It made the children laugh and play to see a lamb at school. That would be so funny if one of you brought a lamb to school. I'd, I'd probably chuckle a little. So that was a rhyming story. It's a nursery rhyme. And this, it's a rhyming book too. Mary had a little snowplow. Now I want to point out to you, there's the snowplow. But here she's carrying a wrench and a toolbox. I think that's a clue about Mary right there. <clears throat> it says here, Mary built a little plow who traveled through the snow. She built it. And everywhere that Mary went, the plow was sure to go. He had a tiny engine and two headlights that shined bright. This determined little snow plow could work all day and night. And what kind of work does a snow plow do? Can you see, there's the plow but behind the plow is this long path. The snow plow pushes all of the snow. It bulldozes all of the snow right out of the street so all of the cars and the buses and the taxis can drive behind. He had four speedy wheels and a shovel with a blade. And even if it hailed or snowed, this plow was not afraid. Listen to that rumble, rumble, beep, beep, beep. Here comes Mary's snowplow rolling up the street. It's a cutie, isn't it? Okay. Oh, that's in the page. Here we go. He came to her, with her to school one day and cleared a steady path. There, see, she can walk behind because she, uh, the snowplow is getting the snow out of the way. Then he remained by her side as it snowed through lunch and math. That sounds like a lot of snow, doesn't it? Oh yeah. As the day continued on, the snow came down in heaps. And when the school bus tried to move, she was buried way too deep. Not to worry, said Little Plow. I'll get you safe and free. For this job, you'll only need a tiny plow like me. Do you think the plow is going to be able to push away all the snow so the school bus can drive? Let's find out. Listen to that rumble, rumble, beep, beep, beep. Here comes Mary's snow plow, ready to clear the street. The shovel ba bravely went swish as the snow turned to muck. And though he worked with all his might, the school bus was still stuck. His little shovel trembled, his engine filled with gloom. But Mary said, all that we need is just a bit more room. She tinkered with the motor so he could start in a blast, then built a brand new shovel so he could scoop super fast. She added extra sturdy wheels to help him through the snow. She built and built without a stop and now he's ready to go. Listen to that rumble, rumble, beep, beep, beep. It's Mary and her snowplow here to save the street. 
swish, swish, scoop, scoop, this team can save the day. Then at last the bus comes free, they cheer and yell hooray. See, there's no more snow in front of the wheels and it's not buried in the snow anymore. Mary and her friend are off, there's no need to fear. Not with this duo on the case, a plow and an engineer. What do we say at the end of a story? The end. All right. Uh, we talked about this a little bit in class today. There's all kinds of different sorts of engineers. And we also talked about auto mechanics. We read this story in auto mechanic. I'm not going to read it now because all of the children already heard this one. But we talked about here you can see the auto mechanic when he is fixing, he's using special tools and he is reaching into little spaces to be able to get to all the parts he needs to fix. One of the things they can do is they put the car up on a lift, here we go, or they have tools with attachments. And I remember in this, Mary had some pretty cool tools too, didn't she? Here she is with her toolbox open, and you can see she has screwdriver and wrench, and it looks to me like she's using a screwdriver there too. But look at this. She's wearing a welding helmet. I think she's doing some welding. Here she's using a ratchet. Ah, and look, she, they said that she built this scoop. She, I probably did some welding there too. So that's a lot of different special tools. I wonder, I mean, I have my toy tools here. I have a toy ratchet. I have a toy screwdriver here. And those are fun for playing with. But I wonder, if any of the grown-ups have any tools that they use at home, maybe your grown-ups can show you their tools and what they do. I also, I have here my own ratchet set. Here we go, it's a wee little ratchet set. And this, it's small, and it has the action where I can turn it to make it go this way, and then it click, click, clicks without turning, and then turns again. So if I need to do something on my car, and yes, I have had to do something on my car, um, I can use this. And you can see the connection here is if I need to do something with a nut, but I also can put in a screwdriver tip too. That's a flathead screwdriver tip. So this ratchet set is in the um it's in the sensory table thought that'd be a good spot for it if anybody wants to play with this make sure it stays in the sensory table because i don't want to lose any of my tools it's a big deal with tools you don't want to lose any of them um but yes grown-ups please if there's any uh fun things uh that you can find around the house to do some fixing with show the kids the tools i think they would be very interested after some of the books we've read all right take care thanks for listening